Hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm here at R Beats Radio and Media Streaming Studio. Today, we're going to talk about geography. Geography is the study of a place and the relationships between people and their environments. Geographers explore both the physical properties of Earth, surface, and the human societies spread across it. Today, we're going to read a book called Mischievous Mimi Explores Seabrook Island. It is written by Catherine Goodman Farley with Madeline and Mary Catherine Farley, illustrated by Susan Leggett. So as you can see, we open up the cover, guys, and we see, what is this? This is a picture of a map. And in the cover, it talks about an island. Does everybody know what an island is? An island is a plot of land that is circled by water. So we're going to read about an island today. Let's find out where this is. Mischievous Mimi explores Seabrook Island. With the warm summer sun rising, Mama Doe decides to take her two young fawns on a barrier island adventure. Ray and Mimi are four weeks old, and it's time for them to explore their homes on Seabrook. Their journey begins in the sunflower fields of Rosebank Farms. Wow, exclaims Mimi. These flowers are so big. They look like they're smiling at the sun. Mimi wanders farther into the fields, but stops when she hears her mom's voice. Be careful where you step, Mimi. Those flowers belong to the farm, and we need to respect other people's property. Mimi knows her mother is right and trots back to the sandy path. The deer pass along Brohick Marina. Mimi lifts her head, turning towards a new smell. Mama, what is that odor? It's the seafood that the fishermen are unloading at the dock, answers Mama Doe. There are many animals that live in the water. People eat some of the sea life, like fish, shrimp, and oysters. Ray interrupts. Mimi, we don't eat the fish or anything from the water, just plants. The deer continues on their morning walk. Wow, look over there, says Ray. What are those huge animals behind the fence? Those are horses at the equestrian center, explains Doe. Ray dashes towards the fence to get a closer look. Mimi scampers over to the barn. Mimi sees several children putting on helmets to go on a trail. Hmm... That looks strange. I wonder what it would be like to have children riding on my back, thinks Mimi. Curious Mimi begins to follow the horses as they leave the equestrian center. There are palmetto palms, pine trees, and magnolias, all forming a canopy over the trail. The smell of the salt air and the summer sunlight shining through the trees brings a smile to Mimi's face. For just a moment, Mimi wonders what Mama Doe and Ray are doing, but she quickly turns her attention back to the horses on the trail. The children laugh as they bounce up and down in the saddles to the clip-clop of the horse's hooves on the sandy path. Mimi enjoys along the path a glistening pond on one side and more trees to the other side. Frogs jumping in the pond and even fish swimming. Deciding she just can't keep up with her long-legged horse, Mimi decides to take a short rest. Mimi awakens to chattering wood ducks swimming with their mothers. Oh, I am so lonely for Mama. I have to find her soon, Mimi thinks, as she watches the mother duck taking care of her ducklings. Still feeling tired, Mimi continues down the trail. She loves to look up all the pretty trees, especially the live oaks with moss hanging down over the trails. Oh, suddenly, her leg starts to feel heavy. What is this mucky stuff? Mimi remembers her mother telling her about pluff mud in the marshes. She looks back, hoping to see Mama Doe and Ray right behind her, but she's still alone, scared without her family. Her legs sink deeper and deeper into the pluff mud until she can't move them. What if I can't get out of this mud? Mimi worries. Gazing up at the sky once again, Mimi sees a funny-looking bird flying towards her. Hi, I'm Henry, honks the heron as he lands. You look like you're having some trouble getting out of this pluff mud. I am, cries Mimi. Can you help me? Henry, the heron, quickly pulls off a stalk of Spartina grass out of the mud. Here, hold on, and I'll pull you out of here. Mimi clenches her mouth tight around the stalk. 
Henry pulls and tugs, but the stock breaks. Oh no, cries Mimi. I'll never get out of this mud. Suddenly Oscar the Osprey swoops down and carries a large stick. I am building a nest, but saw that you might need help, Oscar whistles. Grab hold of this twig and I'll see what I can do. Mimi clenches her at the end of the twig while Oscar and Henry pull on the other end. Slowly, Mimi's legs get longer and longer as they come out of the pluff mud. Glop, glop. Oh, thank you, Mimi exclaimed. Oscar and Henry fly away, and Mimi scampers off towards the beach. Mimi is so relieved to be out of the pluff mud. Her legs are a little sore and a little dirty, but phew, she didn't get hurt. She stops to nibble on some of the sea oats as she climbs up the tall sand dunes at North Beach. Finally, at the top of the dunes, Mimi looks out of the Atlantic Ocean towards Kiwa Island. The summer sun makes the water glisten. What an awesome view, Mimi thinks to herself. Barrier islands are beautiful. Suddenly, Mimi notices a big splash in the water. As soon as her eyes lift back to the sky, she sees a kind friend, Oscar, flying overhead. Oscar, Oscar, cries Mimi. Look at those animals. Oscar flies closer to the edge of the water. Yes, Mimi, isn't that amazing? Those are dolphins, and they are strand feeding. All of the animals on the island having their own special way of getting food when they are hungry, Oscar explains. Hmm, I think I'm hungry, exclaims Mimi. Guess what, Oscar? Joe and Ray are down the beach. They're going to be happy to see you. Mimi begins to trot with excitement, moving her tired legs faster and faster. She can't wait to see her mama and her brother again. She is hungry and scared without her family. After passing the jetty at the club beach, Mimi finds herself on Pelican Beach. With each step, she moves closer and closer to Mama Doe and Ray. Several children are playing in the surf when suddenly they look up and notice Mimi. Pointing excitedly, they are amazed that a fawn is running across the dunes. Wow, I love this island, laughs one of the children. There are so many interesting animals living here. Oscar swoops down into the grove of wax myrtles. Mimi is so happy she has found Mama Doe and Ray. Mimi, where have you been all day, cries Mama Doe. Ray and I have been looking all over for you on the island. You know better than to explore alone. Mama and Mimi nuzzle tightly. They are so relieved to find each other. Mama, I know, I know, but I saw so many different animals today. I explored the marsh, trails, and beach. I even met two very special friends, Oscar the Osprey and Henry the Heron. They helped me get out of the pluff mud when I got stuck, Mimi remembers. I guess if you had been with me today, I never would have gotten stuck. I learned my lesson. I must stay with my family until I'm old enough to explore the island alone. Ray interrupted his sister. You must hear about our day. Ray begins to tell Mimi about his adventures. When you disappeared from the equestrian center, Mama and I set out to find you. We were walking all along the hidden oak trail beside the pond, and I saw Allie, the alligator, basking in the sun. I thought it would be fun to play with Allie, so I kicked a pebble into the pond. Allie was not happy when the pebble hit her in the head, but lucky for Ray, Allie just frowned, explained Doe. I have told both of you to respect other animals and their homes, insisted Doe. Alligators must be very dangerous. You should always keep your distance from them. Alligators are dangerous. The sun is beginning to set over the water at Pelican Beach. Now let's settle down and nibble on some plants. You must be hungry after this adventurous day, said Doe. Doe smiled, looking over the moonlight beach. She is thankful her fawns are safe. And that concludes the story of Mischievous Mimi Explore Seabrook Island. What are some of the lessons that we kind of learned in this book today, guys? One of the take-home messages that I learned from this book was maybe to stay close to your family members or a loved one until you're old enough to explore on your own because something dangerous or something scary might happen. So it's always best to play on the safe side. And I would love to hear from you. If you want to like, click, and subscribe, I want to hear all the love. Be sure to tune back in for our next adventure. Thank you, guys.